Hello, today we're talking about how your organization can benefit from a community garden. And because I do not have a green thumb, I am joined by Charlotte DeVetto, who, while working at Fastenal, got her degree in environmental resource studies. Charlotte, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. So we're talking about lawns. Uh, let's cut right to the chase. Why would an organization want to convert away from mowable grass? So I know we're all accustomed to the perfectly manicured lawn, uh, but it does come with some downsides. Each lawn is a bit different, but they use a lot of energy, water, pesticides, and of course money. They don't help our local ecology. They're usually made up of invasive species. And those pesticides and herbicides we use to maintain them are often carcinogens or disrupt hormones, and not to mention the low height of the grass that we're always cutting it at. It can contribute to smog in your area, lots and lots of gas is spilled uh, as people fill up their equipment each year, and a lot of the water that we're using is could be fresh water for drinking. So when we're talking about lawns, we know that they aren't overly sustainable. What are some alternatives? So two that are gaining a lot of popularity are community gardens and rewilding. So you're talking about community gardens. What all is involved in establishing one of those? So it depends on how big you want your project to be. Uh, first, you want to make sure that you select your site. It's safe to grow food on. You might even want to do a soil test and ensure that there's a water source nearby. It's best to pick somewhere that would get about six hours of direct sunlight. Uh, to start from there, make a draft of your garden. You can work with your local nursery, colleges and there's lots of resources online to determine which plants would be best suited for your area their spacing and sizing requirements uh, you want to consider the local wildlife in your area if you're going to have problems with critters you might want to consider a raised bed or some fencing you sound like you might be speaking from experience charlotte <laughs> yes i uh, put in a new garden recently i was told there weren't a lot of critters and Come the very next day after planting some kale, bunnies had eaten it to the core. <laughs> <laughs> so fencing is a good idea on any garden. Absolutely. We'll just leave it at that. Don't waste your money like I did. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anybody want to make the switch though? What benefits does a community garden offer an organization? Of course. So you'll see that there's a lot of demand now for corporations to be more sustainable uh, and showing social responsibility. So there's a lot of aspects that tie into this by having a garden. First off, you get your team exercising, which increases their mental health at a low cost. Diet-wise, your team has this access to fresh, healthy produce, and they don't even have to stop at the grocery store for it. Converting your lawn really shows the whole community that you're committed to healthy environments, communities, and employees. Not to mention you remove the cost of lawn maintenance. Uh, it's hard to give an exact price, but, you know, I know from experience, those first startup costs with a garden usually just include items that you're going to have long term. You can use the same site over, the same fencing, uh, so you definitely save some money. And we hear a lot about climate change right now. Uh, it seems pretty obvious that a garden would be better than a lawn in that way to me, but is that true? Uh, so if you're gardening by hand, you're removing any sources of greenhouse gas emissions by not using a lawnmower. And greenhouse gas emissions, uh, sometimes also known as GHG, uh, is that the industry term? Or is that just something I read online? No, you got it right. Uh, so that's the gases that remain trapped in our atmosphere. They would normally, you know, some of them escape out into space. Uh, but here they get trapped and act like a blanket and warm the planet. Okay. So you were saying before I jumped in and uh, not necessarily cut you off, but uh, you were saying <laughs> that... Uh, lawns help combat climate change. How is that? So there's a few angles that you can look at it. So first, the food that's coming from the garden will have lower emissions than anything from the grocery store. Often when we're in the grocery store, you'll see that food has come out of state, it's wrapped in plastic. To get there, it was transported in a climate-controlled vehicle. And then when it's in the store, it's in these open refrigerators. So when you're growing your food and getting it from your own garden, you've removed that plastic waste, the fuel, the electricity. Uh, you can also, uh, all your lunchroom waste, like the organics, banana peels, apple cores, can be composted there. Typically, if that goes in the garbage and ends up in a landfill, it can't break down properly and actually releases more greenhouse gases than it would as compost. 
So you've gotten rid of a chunk of lawn. You've converted it over to a community garden and you're growing veggies and food there. The thing that I'm kind of curious about is like, can you just give that produce away? Is that like a free PR boost for you? Is donating food even legal? I've definitely heard the rumors that giving away the food is illegal. Thankfully in the US under the Good Samaritan Act, perfectly legal, protects you from any liability. Uh, and it's so important. In 2019, it was estimated approximately 10% of U.S. households don't have access to enough food for a healthy, active life. Uh, and they've done studies and found about 3% uh, of the average yard size or about 200 square feet can produce half the produce you need for a home. So doing that work and giving away that extra produce to a food bank is a great way to help out the community. Well, Charlotte, thanks for talking today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.